the real truth about elite bodybuilding chemistry. Let me tell you what the mainstream supplement industry and your government approved experts don't want you to understand about Ronnie Coleman's success. While they're selling overpriced protein powder and telling you to stay natural, the real winners in this game are operating on an entirely different level of biochemical optimization. Here's what Ronnie Coleman was actually using and more importantly, what he probably didn't even know he was using. The coach athlete dynamic that no one talks about. First, let's address the elephant in the room that every mainstream fitness influencer is too scared to mention. Ronnie Coleman likely had no idea what specific compounds were flowing through his veins during his Olympia reign. I have friends who are top level bodybuilding coaches, the guys behind multiple Olympia champions, and you know what they tell me? They never tell their athletes exactly what they're taking. The coach provides the chemistry, gives the instructions, and the athlete just follows the protocol. Why? because the chemistry gets complicated. We're talking about selective androgen receptor modulators, SARMs that didn't even have names back then, growth hormone releasing peptides, GHRPs and specific pulsatile patterns, insulin protocols timed to the minute with different analogs, IGF-1 variants, DES versus LR3 and localized growth, thyroid manipulation with T3 and T4 ratios, anti-estrogens and aromatase inhibitors balanced to maintain anabolic signaling while controlling water retention, and designer compounds that were 10 years ahead of what WADA even knew existed. The athletes didn't need to understand biochemistry. That's the coach's job. The athlete's job is to train, eat, and inject what they're told to inject. The evolution of bodybuilding chemistry. Now let's get educational about really what changed in the 1990s because it wasn't just test, D-ball, and DECA like every cookie cutter bodybuilding channel regurgitates. Let's start with the Stone Age, pre-1990s. Testosterone in various esters, Cypionate, enanthate, propionate, nandrolone, decadurobalin for joint protection and mass, methandrostenolone, methandrostenolone, dianabol, oral kickstart, stenozolol, winstrol for hardening. Basic stuff, effective but limited. The revolution, 1990s, Ronnie's era. This is where the chemistry got interesting. Recumbent growth hormone, 191 amino acid sequence, not the garbage 192 AA version from cadivers. Pharmaceutical grade, humotrope, nordotrope. 8 to 12 IU daily, not the 2 to 4 IU anti-aging doses, and insulin protocols, Humalog, fast-acting, post-workout, Lantus, long-acting for 24-hour anabolism. This wasn't random. It was timed with glucose disposal and nutrient partitioning. IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, both synthetic and localized protocols. This is what created the freaky fullness that you couldn't achieve with just AAS, anabolic androgenic steroids. Advanced aromatase control, Imidex, anastrozole, not the ancient Nolvidex. This allowed for higher testosterone dosages without the estrogenic side effects. Trenbolone acetate, the king of recomposition, androgenic anabolic rating that makes testosterone look weak. And then the genetic response factor that nobody discusses. Here's the real secret about Ronnie, and it's not what compound he took, it's how his body responded to those compounds. While the mainstream fitness industry sells you a fantasy that anyone can look like Ronnie with hard work, here's the biochemical truth. Ronnie was a hyper responder. This means superior androgen receptor density. More receptors equals more places for the chemistry to bind. Optimal SHBG levels. Sex hormone binding globulin stayed low, meaning more free testosterone. Liver function. His liver processed 17 alpha alkylated orals without the typical hepatoxicity. Myostatin inhibition. Likely had genetic polymorphisms that limited myostatin, the muscle limiting hormone. P450 enzyme efficiency. He could metabolize compounds without building up toxic metabolites. Most guys taking the same stack, their blood work looks like toxic waste. ALT and AST lever enzymes through the roof, lipid profiles destroyed, HDL in single digits, hematocrit requiring therapeutic phlebotomy, blood pressure requiring multiple medications, mood swings from fluctuating hormones. Ronnie, his blood work stayed relatively stable. His last Joe Rogan interview confirmed this. He claims he got blood work every three to four months and it stayed good. That's not the drugs, that's genetics meeting chemistry. 
The truth about modern enhancement versus the past. The mainstream supplement industry wants you to believe that their overpriced BCAAs and natural test boosters will help you train like Ronnie. What a joke. Meanwhile, we now have access to the compounds that make 1990s chemistry look primitive. Selective antigen receptor modulators, SARMs, tissue selective anabolism, peptides that stimulate specific growth pathways, myostatin inhibitors that remove genetic limitations, gene expression modulators that literally change how your DNA expresses. But here's what pisses me off. The government and pharmaceutical companies have created this artificial scarcity. They've made these tools illegal or prescription only, not because they're dangerous, everything is dangerous at the wrong dosage, but because it threatens the profit model. The real lesson from Ronnie Coleman. The lesson isn't take what Ronnie took. That's idiotic. The lesson is this. Stop believing the natural lie. Every elite athlete is enhanced, period. Chemistry is a tool. Like any tool, it can build or destroy depending on how you use it. Genetics determine response. What makes one man a legend might put another man in the hospital. Knowledge is power. But most athletes don't even know what they're taking. The system is rigged. While they tell you to stay natural, the elites have access to cutting-edge chemistry. The bottom line? Ronnie Coleman didn't become Ronnie Coleman because of some secret stack. He became Ronnie Coleman because he had genetic gifts that allowed him to be hyper-responding to enhancement. He had access to a knowledgeable coach who understood biochemistry. He trained with intensity that matched his chemical enhancement. His body could handle what would hospitalize normal humans. But more importantly, and this is what the mainstream will never tell you, the real tragedy is that this knowledge and these tools are kept from the average person who could benefit from them safely under proper guidance. A day natural is a day wasted. Every biological problem has a chemical solution. The question isn't whether you will enhance. It's whether you'll do it intelligently or remain trapped in the matrix of mainstream mediocrity. Stop worshiping the drugs. Stop demonizing them. Start understanding them. Because in the war between natural and enhanced, natural already lost. It lost the day we invented chemistry. Yeah, biochemistry. Lightweight, baby. Only if you understand molecular weight. Tony Huge, JD, medical lawyer, enhanced athlete, pioneer of human evolution. For every biological problem, there's a chemical solution.